Hi everyone, John here today. In this video we're looking at four questions and we're introducing expanding and factorising quadratic equations and you're going to see a lot of these over the next probably uh, two years. So four questions, feel free to skip to the question you're interested in which is shown in red. Okay, question one. Well, now we're going to be expanding some of these, what they call quadratics. We're going to deal later on with what quadratics actually means, but we're going to start first few questions, just some um, real solid basics that we need to know. So the first one deals with expanding. I'm just going to go through, you might have done this before, I'm going to go through and show you how I would go about expanding these quadratics. Okay, so the first one here, we've got two brackets with two terms. Um, we're going to do a method called, called FOIL, which stands for... Uh, foil, so, so first, outsides, insides, last. And what that essentially means is I'm going to times this, these two first, x by x, and then I'm going to do x by 8, and then I'm going to go 2 by x, and then I'm going to go 2 by 8. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've done that one first, then I'll go x by 8, then I'll go 2 by x, and then 2 times 8 is 16. Now we haven't quite finished there yet because we have like terms here, which I'm then going to group and add them together. 8x is plus 2x is 10x, plus 16. So there's our expanded answer for these brackets, and this is in quadratic form. And just a bit of a heads up, quadratic means that the highest power of x will be 2. So x, this here is 1, there's no x here, power of 2. That's, that's basically what quadratic means. A quadratic is a fancy word of saying that. If I had an x to the 3 in there, that would no longer be a quadratic. That would be what's called a, uh, a cubic. But we're not going to deal with that. Okay. Alright, the second one now. Uh, just, just, just with quadratics as well. That's the next advancements up. Previously, when we uh, you probably would have done linear lines with x to the power of one. That's just going to be a straight line in your in your x y graph. So now we're going a little further. Than that we're no longer dealing with straight lines. We're going to be dealing with curved lines. And a quadratic, just for your future reference, will be, will be looking like this. It's like a smiley face or a frown face. But we're going to do a lot more of that later on. So back to what we're doing here, expanding brackets. Let's do the same thing again, but for this one here. So x by x, x squared, uh, x by minus 3, yeah, so it'll be minus 3x, 8 di x, 8x, 8 times minus 3 is minus 24, group the like terms, minus 3x plus 8x is 5x, minus 24. Cool. Last one here, now we've got x plus 5 all squared. Okay, you can do this two different ways. I'm going to make this firstly into a way that you can then go and expand it and then I'll tell you the other way later on. If I have, uh, let's say, a squared, that is the same as a times a, or a times by itself two times. So using that piece of knowledge, I can say that this is the same as, and it is, x plus 5, all in brackets, times by itself twice. So now this is the same as what we have up here. So I'm going to go x times x, uh, x times 5, and then 5 times x, plus 25. Now I'm going to group these like terms. Uh, 5x plus 5x is 10x plus 25. So that is a perfectly good way to go and expand these. If you're happy with that, I'm completely fine. For those who want a little step ahead, I'll show you a second way to do it. Let's say we have a bracket a plus b squared. So this is the same as this where a is x and b is 5. If you want to go quickly to the last answer, basically skip the second step, the answer to this will be a squared plus 2 times AB plus B squared. So, 
let's use this example. So let's use x plus 5 squared. That would be, well, a is x, so it's going to be x squared plus 2 times x times 5. So 2 by 5 is 10 times x is 10x plus b squared, so 5 squared, 25. And notice, same answer there. So whichever one you're comfortable with, that's fine. Either is, either will get you the right answer. Question 2. We are doing the opposite of question 1. We're now going to go to factorising. So factorising is going from um, no brackets to brackets and expanding is going from brackets to no brackets. So they're like the opposite of each other. So these two here are, are examples where the brackets are like terms. So for example, in both of them, x minus 1 is in both, so they're like terms. So let, let's use another example. Let's say I had, to use a random example, 5b minus uh, ab. And let's look at this. What's common in both of these two terms? Well, b is common in both. So when you're factorising, you can bring b at the front of the brackets. And then what are these two terms? What is What do I times with b to get 5b? We 5 minus, and what do I times AB to get, sorry, what do I times with B to get AB? A. Okay, so that is an example of factorising. So using that, this B here is a term, and also this X minus 1 in brackets is also just a term. And it looks a little bit more complex, but the same principles can apply. So, What's common in 5 brackets x minus 1 close brackets minus a brackets x minus 1 close brackets? Well, x minus 1 is common, so I can bring that out the front. And then I open a bracket like I have here. Now, what do I need to times x minus 1 with to get 5 bracket x minus 1? Well, I need to times by 5. And then minus, because this sign here is minus. And what do I need to times x minus 1 with to get a x minus 1. Well, we should have times it by A. And there's our factorised answer. So, same again for the second one. X plus 2 is common, so I'm going to bring that out the front. Now, what do I need to times X plus 2? So, I think I might have said minus before. What do I need to times X plus 2 with to get B X plus 2? This needs to times it by B plus. What do I need to times X plus 2 to get 3 bracket X plus 2? Just B. 3. So these are pretty simple questions, and there's the answer to both of those. Question 3, we're factorising again. Now these three are sort of a little common group of questions, and you'll probably definitely see them in your tests. So I'll teach you a very neat way to um, go about solving these particular type of questions. Let me just show you something. Let's say I have two brackets, and I'm going to use A and B. And these brackets have a plus b, and then a minus b. Now, I'm going to use FOIL to go and expand these brackets. So I'll go first, so a squared, uh, and then a times minus b is minus ab, and the insides plus ab, and then last, minus b squared. Now, these two are like terms, ab, so I'm going to have a squared minus ab plus ab. It's going to be, leave no ab minus b squared, and there's our expanded answer to this example. Now, have a look at what we got here. We have a squared minus b squared. Now, have a look over here. We have something squared minus a number, which can also be written as something squared. 9 can also be written as 3 squared, for example. And these also can be written as other squares, and I'll deal with these later on. They're a little bit trickier, but... Bear with me on this one here. So let's look at, let's say we start at this point here and we want to go back to the top to factorise into bracket form. Well, the rule we have here, if you have a squared minus b squared, your final factorised answer will be a plus b, close bracket, open bracket again, a minus b. So just keep that rule in hand. It's, pretty, it's a pretty neat rule, that one. Um, I'll, I'll leave it there and let's go ahead and solve these. So this one... We'll go over here. x squared minus 9. So in this example, the x is the a, and the 9, well, I'm going to write this as 
x squared minus 3 squared, because 3 squared equals 9. So a is the x, b is the 3. So I can go straight to my final answer and go x plus 3, x minus 3. Pretty simple. Cool. All right, let's do a little squiggle line through here and let's bring this next one down. 5x squared minus 45. Now this is a slight trick here and I'm going to do one step first. I'm going to, I'm going to factorise first by looking at these two terms and seeing what's common. Well, x squared isn't common because there's no x squared over here, but 5 is. So I'm going to bring 5 out the front. What do I need to times by 5 to get 5x squared? Times by x squared. What do I need to times by 5 to get 45? 9. Now look what we got here. We can also write this as 5x squared minus 3 squared. Is that still in camera? Yep, cool. And again, very similar up here. We can then jump straight to the answer. Actually, for, for room, I'll, I'll come around this way. So our final answer will be 5 x plus 3, x minus 3. Now you might be wondering, well, can you just do that and now turn one bracket into two brackets? You can, because they're all connected by multiplication signs. This is, this 5 is times by this bracket, all of this, and also times by this bracket. So we are okay to go ahead and do that. Alright, I'm going to rub some of this out now from here and do the last one. Okay, last one. X squared minus 7. Again, another little trick here. I previously wrote 9 as 3 squared. Okay. Um, the reason I did that is I want to find what number squared gives 9. If I want to do it with 7, that's hard. It's going to be two point something and a very long answer that I'm not going to deal with. But I can also write that as the square root of 7 all squared. Okay, The square root of 7 will be that number, 2 point something, 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 something. And then I'm just going to put a whole bracket around it and square it all. Okay, So the, the answer to square root of 7 squared is 7. And let's go and see why I did that. Instead of writing x squared minus 7, I'll write that it is x squared minus square root of 7, all squared. And it's in the form we like. I'll get rid of that. Where the a is x and the b is square root of 7. So I'll jump straight to my last answer. x plus square root of 7, x minus square root of 7. And there we go. There's our answer. Question 4, factorising again. Now, I'll give you a warning about this question. This question is a little bit tricky, all right? And they rely on how I would solve it, and I'm going to show you my way. I, I turn it into a bit of a game, and I like to do a little bit of problem solving and a bit of a, bit of a, yeah, I guess, critical way and problem solving way of actually finding out the answer. I will show you a thing straight away, though. Okay, I'm going to draw some quadratic brackets like we've been doing. So that's two brackets with X's in them. Um, what letters? Do I, I'm a bit sick of everyone using A and B and X. They seem to be everywhere in textbooks. So I'm going to use, well, my name's John Fox. So I'm going to use J and F. Now, I could have also used J for Jack, my brother. Either would work. If I want to go and expand this, I'll expand it quickly. Plus... Uh, fx plus jx plus jf. Jf again. Cool. So this is the factorized formula form, and this is the expanded form. Okay. So basically, what we're doing with these two questions, they are currently in expanded form, and we need to turn them into bracket form. So that's the goal for this way here, and I like to go. I like to write this on the top of my page and go, okay, let's go and figure out what J and F are. Because we're going to end up with brackets like this.
we're going to end up with two brackets like this, and we need to find out what these two numbers are. So let's use our good brains and figure that out. So x squared, well, that's x squared there, so we're okay. Now, 4x. Let's look at this, fx. So if we have 4x, we straight away know that we reckon the f, so this one here, looking at this form, is going to be 4. Let's look at the next one, ax. So we need, we're looking up here for jx, and so we can say that j is, oh, this is getting confusing, there's letters everywhere, we can say that this j here is this a here. And let's go see if we're right for this last one. 4a, so that's j times f, and we've agreed that j is a, and f is 4. So that is right. Uh, this is not, uh, it might take you a few questions to figure this out, but let's go have a look at the second one now. We know it's going to be in the form of x plus something, x plus something. Well, we actually don't know of these signs yet. Uh, no, we'll leave them as pluses for now. So, let's have a look at this here. We're looking at fx now. We have 2x here instead. So we can say that f is 2. Let's look at the next one here, jx. We have minus ax. So we can say that j is minus a. And the last one here, just to see if we're right, we have minus 2a, and we need it to be jf. We know that j is minus a, and f is 2. So 2 times minus a will be minus 2a, so we're right. Now, this isn't quite finished, because if you have x plus minus a, you should actually just write that as x minus a. And then this is x plus 2. So... There's my method of factorising these types. To be honest, they're not very common. You might get you might get one on your test, but after this test, you probably won't see these again. So we're going to teach you now the proper way of factorising quadratics in the next few questions.